There were a lot of scandals in the Alberta provincial election that led to the downfall of Jim Prentice, the Alberta Premier, but he won his own seat. However, literally as votes were still being counted in his riding, he quit, causing another costly by-election. Scandal upon scandal. Jim Prentice leaves in disgrace. Joining us now from Alberta to, to talk about this is our old friend Paige McPherson, who's the Alberta director of the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. Paige, great to see you again. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. You know, it was it's such a shocking night, of course. Rachel Notley and the New Democrats receiving a majority in a province that has never elected New Democrats. It's the most conservative province around. So it got lost in the shuffle, but I thought it was quite scandalous that after asking his own riding to vote for him, and actually getting those votes, Jim Prentice said, I'm out of here. I mean, it's one thing for him to say, I resign as PC party leader. But for him to say, I don't even care enough about the people who voted for me to stick around. I got better things to do. That was ra I, I thought that was a disgraceful and condescending way to leave. Well, I, I think it was a blindsiding to Alberta taxpayers and especially to the voters in Calgary foothills. And most importantly, I think it's a financial blindsiding because not only before the votes were even counted, did our premier step down from his seat uh, and tell, as you said, the voters who just elected him that he would no longer be serving them if he couldn't be premier, kind of the political equivalent of taking his ball and going home. But he also left us with a $250,000 bill. And uh, Alberta taxpayers are now expected after paying for four by-elections in 2014, and then a general election uh, in this year that we just had, of course, now they're expected to foot the bill for another completely unnecessary by-election caused by Jim Prentice. Yeah. You know, I'm reminded of, say, Stefan Dion, who ran for the Liberal, uh, federal Liberals in 2008. He lost, he got trounced, but he won his own seat. Obviously, he resigned as Liberal leader, but he had, no, I'm not even going to say the courtesy, he had the democratic respect for those who just voted for him to stick around and actually be an able and passionate advocate for them. Obviously, I don't agree with Stefan Dion any more than I agree with Jim Prentice, but at least he had a respect. This, you know, all the charges made about Michael Ignatieff, he didn't come back for you, he's only here for himself, he only came back from Harvard because he wants to be the boss. Every one of those applies to Jim Prentice. If he couldn't be king of the world, he had no time to be a lowly MLA. He actually shows in his ouster the same disrespect for democracy he had when he tried to dissolve the opposition with his secret deal with Danielle Smith. I'm furious about his disrespect for democracy, but you are with the Taxpayers Federation, and you are correct to point out that his disgrace, his final disgrace, is costing a quarter million bucks. Now let me ask you, has that, I suppose it's too early for that nomination, for that for that by-election even to be considered. I mean, Rachel Notley and the cabinet haven't even been formally sworn in yet. So this by-election probably won't happen until well into the summer, perhaps even in September, am I right? Yeah, so the Premier has within six months from when Jim Prentice officially resigns his seat to call a by-election. So what you're going to be looking at, you know, for the voters of Calgary Foothills that now have gone to the polls twice already in under a year, uh, they could be going to the polls three times within mm -hmm. a year. Uh, but it could, if, if not within a year, then it's going to be within six months of when he officially steps down. Uh, and, and so that's going to be three times to the polls within about a year, right? A very short period of time. And and this is after, you know, there have been two uh, other sets of elections called by Jim Prentice, as I mentioned, the by-elections uh, in 2014 that totaled $1.1 million for Alberta taxpayers. And then the general election that we just had, I'll mention, also was unnecessary because Prentice decided to call that election a year early. And he probably knew that it was going to be a historically expensive election, $23.5 million because of some changes that were made federally. And yet he still chose to fast forward that cost, mm. essentially, onto yeah. Albertans a year early early. So we had this unnecessary election, $23.5 million, and then on the night of that election, we get the news that we're going to have another unnecessary yeah. election, $250,000. If you look at the total of all three of these events, it's $24.8 million, dollars, yeah. excuse me, in Alberta tax dollars. Well, I mean, that's a lot. That's pocket change to Jim Prentice, who, who, whose last budget uh, uh, had the largest deficit in Alberta history, what, about $10 billion? So this is play money for them. Now, let me ask you a question. Since his disgraceful ouster and his, 
you know, quitting in a huff, a pouty boy. Has anyone seen, seen Jim Prentice? I understand that the PC party is having a fundraising dinner, I think even this week in Calgary. I don't know who would be insane enough to go there, either to give money to the PCs or to be associated with such a disgraced party or to basically say to Rachel Notley, you know, I, I, I mean, it, it's, there's no good reason to go to that dinner. It, Jim, has Jim Prentice been seen? Is he even still in Alberta? Has he gone back to Toronto to ask for his old bank job back? Does anyone know where he is? I haven't really seen him in the media, but certainly at that leaders dinner, if he is there, I mean, that would be a really good opportunity, I think, for the media to uh, say to Jim Prentice, are you going to cover the cost of your by-election? Of course, I don't know him personally. I can't go up and, and actually ask him this well, question. Well, I think you can, Paige. In fact, if it's at a fundraiser, if the last damn fool Tories who <laughs> actually want to give Jim Prentice what is it, 500000 bucks a ticket. That would be a perfect place, Paige, for you to ask Jim Prentice, you raised all this money tonight, will you dedicate it to the cost of the unnecessary spite by It's a hate by-election. It's a spite by-election. He's basically saying, if you won't make me as your premier, I'm not interested in being an MLA. All right, Jim Prentice, you have the right to do with your life as you want. You want to slink back to Toronto and get a bank job, that's fine. But will you at least take this money from the last foolish Tory lobbyist in town, foolish enough to give you the dough, will you at least offset the... I think that would actually be the only question I would be interested to hear from Jim Prentice on. There's really nothing else I would like to hear Jim Prentice talk about other than would he put those funds to the by-election. Now, there has been an internet campaign. Is there a Twitter hashtag that people can follow? Is there a website? How can people join their voices to yours, Paige, to ask for Prentice to pay it back? Sure, so they can check me out on Twitter. I'm at Paige McPee, and I started a hashtag called PayUpPrentice, and there's a lot of angry Albertans that are tweeting about this. So people can tweet with the hashtag PayUpPrentice, or they can follow that for an update on uh, all, all of the media coverage that this issue has been getting. There's also, as you mentioned, a grassroots petition that was started. I didn't even start it. It was just a, another angry Albertan who started this petition to try and get Prentice to pay back this money. And just, I want to be clear about something. I'm not calling for some kind of a blanket policy. I don't think that we should force Prentice, and, and nor can and we to stay in the legislature. I don't think he'd make a very good representative under those circumstances. And I don't think that we can or should force him to pay it back. But in this situation, it's just so very clearly the right thing to do for Jim Prentice to step up and see if he can foot the bill in some way. Maybe he can fundraise. Maybe the PCs have some leftover money in their war chest. Perhaps he can pay out of pocket, uh, like we saw with uh, a BC representative, the former mayor of Penticton, Dan Ashton, who decided he wanted to run for provincial policy politics. So when he caused the unnecessary by-election in that area, he paid the bill himself after he was elected to provincial politics. So I, I just think it's, it's not that they're, they're necessarily forced to do it. Uh, it's that it's the right thing to do and that they should do it. And that I think is just, that's the case for Jim Prentice that he needs to see right now. Yeah, Paige, asking Jim Prentice to do the right thing because it's the right thing. I think we can guess how that's going to end. Great to see you, my friend. Keep fighting for taxpayers in Alberta. They need all the help they can get. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant.